எல்லோருக்கும் வணக்கம் திஸ் இஸ் அரீஸ் ஆஃப் லெக்சர்ஸ் ஆன் திருக்குறள் ஹவு டு டேக் திருக்குறள் டு யுனெஸ்கோ ரோட் டு யுனெஸ்கோ ஸோ ஃபார் வி ஹேட் த்ரீ லெக்சர்ஸ் அண்ட் திஸ் ஃபோர்த் இன் சீரீஸ் அண்ட் எவ்ரி மந்த் வி ஹேவ் அ ஸ்காலர் வித் அஸ் ஸோ ஃபார் வி ஹேவ் ஃபோர் ஆஃப் தம் ஸ்போக்கன் திஸ் இஸ் அ ஃபோர்த் ஒன் திஸ் இஸ் அன் அட்டம் டு take thirukkural outside tamil nadu outside tamil speaking population so over a period of time we intend to have uh, speakers from all over the world both uh, tamil as well as non tamil uh, speakers today we have with us uh, uh, professor p bardhanayagam uh, before formally introducing uh, i request uh, uh, dr arubum parasraman uh, who has been spearheading this movement uh, to create awareness to create enough um, uh, uh, to to create uh, uh, the proper environment uh, so that thirukkural is widely known outside uh, tamil world and it is taken to unesco as most of you will be aware dr arun prasaraman had a very long stint uh, in the education side of mauritius as well as he had a lot of experience in unesco and he is spearheading this movement while the mail extending uh, extensive support to the whole program uh, madam chandrika has drafted a paper on the background of uh, the background of this whole series uh, what are, what are the what are the objectives uh, what are the methodology how are, we, how are we going to take it to unesco all this have uh, been outlined in the paper today i request uh, dr arun parasraman to chair the session uh, address the gathering and um, uh, b- briefly outline uh, the purpose of this meeting uh, thank you sir and uh, once again i welcome everyone uh, to this meeting um, dr arun prasaraman thank you very much uh, mr rajendran vanakkam i would uh, i could see that uh, dr chandrika subramaniam has joined us now i will probably ask her to give the introductory address as you used to do as is planned on the uh, objective of this of uh, this conference dr chandrika are you with us yeah. thank you very much but uh, uh, apologies for the delay can you no, hear me listening. yes we can hear you okay. go ahead and then i will i will uh, yeah. make my address thank yeah. you sir the international thirukkural foundation mauritius initiated this unesco program to promote thirukkural at international level as well as as a universal literature which accepts all religions all languages all lands as one and give a universal message to the world the participants will be international participants including tamil scholars industrialists um sorry educationists ministers of high level ministry of officials opinion leaders of tamil organizations youth children and international organization eminent researchers and speakers the working language will be tamil and english the objectives will be to identify the role and value of thirukkural in promoting universality understand the importance of thirukkural as a universal literature creation of action plan to encourage learning thirukkural among the next generation to celebrate and promote thirukkural and thiruvalluvar to take thirukkural as a universal literature to the unesco expected outcomes are a high level intellectual involvement engage the next generations following up action plans partnership for following up initiatives this was following a very successful international thirukkural conference organized jointly by tamil valarchi mandram sydney and international thirukkural foundation mauritius in 2019 in sydney in association with sydney university with an underpinning theme of thirukkural and peace and harmony in sydney 2000 20 then we also did uh, an uh, another uh, online um, uh, conference in 2020 thirukkural and multiculturalism in association with srm university it was decided to organize this conference as an international conference with underpinning in thirukkural and universality highlighting all this uh, universal nature to scope thirukkural as a universal literature and holds its values at unesco Professor Harmangam Parasraman president of International Thirukkural Foundation Mauritius and Dr Chandrika Subramaniam that's myself founder Tamil Valachi Mandram and Dr Sri Rajendran 
founder, coordinator, voice of Valdivar family in association with the Balai Tamil, we organized many programs scheduled from last January till we reach the um, UNESCO in future. The conference will unleash the potential of ancient literature Thirukkural as a book of the world, which perfectly suits the modern lifestyle, which will expose its universal values at world level. This is the first in the series and there are many more to come. May I now request Mr. R Dr. Armugam Parasraman to deliver his speech. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Chandrika. Welcome to our conference. And uh, well, Yalorukum Vanakkam, I would like to welcome all the respected and distinguished participants to this yes. conference, yes. the fourth uh, conference on Tirukural and uh, UNESCO for World Peace. Well, our chief guest, Professor P. Maruta Nayagam, Dr. Chandrika Subramanyam, founder of Tamil Maral Chimandram, Mr. Rajendran, founder of Voice of Valluvar, and Mr. Pata Sarati, founder of Valley Tamil, who are the, we are the co-organizers of this conference. I'm pleased to welcome all of you to this fourth talk in the context of a monthly talk series starting in January uh, 2021, in fact, on the 15th on Valluvar Day, and the overarching theme we've chosen for this series of conferences is Tirukkural and UNESCO for World Peace. And it's also part of a, a part of the roadmap for our journey to take Tirukkural from Tamil Nadu, India, to the world at UNESCO in Paris. Well, today's international conference theme is on Tirukkural as a world book. We are honored to have an eminent speaker in the person of respected professor P. Maruta Nayagam, educationalist author and researcher scholar in English literature and Tamil literature. I will introduce him at the end of my brief introductory address. Well, I would like right at the outset to pay uh, tribute uh, to, to congratulate, you know, our young and dynamic Parta Sarati with a technical organizer of this conference and provide a lot of support. He's doing some fantastic job on Tirukural, and I've invited him at the next conference to share with us what he has done in terms of the applications he has developed for Tirukural. So that will be for him, but he has, he's doing some interesting work whereby he's doing some analytics on Tirukural users from January to December, 2020 in Valley Tamil Tirukural section he could record 1.4 million pages read by users. And he does analytics on, on which Tirukkural and which Tirukkural Adhikaram they see most. So that, that's how they, they try to improve further the presentation. And another interesting analytics, which I would like to refer to, in 2020, 6.8 million Tamil people visited Tamil, baletamil.com and 51 million pages read by users overall. So he's doing his best to build a media 12 years back for Tamil language, literature, values, and social thinking. So I would like to congratulate you, Paratasarati, and wish you to continue and keep up with this great work that you are doing. Well, before I come to, the, uh, to our theme of today, I think I just want to share briefly some of the major development that has taken place since he launched, launched this initiative of, of having Tirukkural, taking Tirukkural to the world, in addition to the conference in Mauritius and then in Kanyakumari, Liverpool, Sydney, and, and the international conference at UNESCO New Delhi, I must say there is a very important landmark judgment by the Madras High Court, which has, which has given a very strong mm -hmm. impulse to this, to this initiative of taking Tirukkural to the world. I'm referring to the judgment uh, which was given in, in, on Tirukkural, uh, whereby a senior citizen in India who was concerned about the deteriorating standards made an appeal to the court to direct the government to rectify the situation by teaching Tirukkural in the schools so as to prom propound universal value. When Honorable Justice Mahadevan of the Madras High Court got that case in uh, the case came to him, he considered the prayer and gave his judgment. And that I think this judgment is a landmark judgment 
unique in the history of all those world uh, literature, all those universal books. And this is now being implemented in Tamil Nadu. And this judgment fits in very well with the mission of UNESCO. That's why we felt that the judgment and the teaching in Turukural will certainly, together with UNESCO, make a remarkable contribution to world peace. And I would just like to, to say that uh, UNESCO itself, I've repeated it, but UNESCO's, in the constitution of UNESCO, it is stated that since wars begins in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be built. So we could see the relationship from between the teachings of Tirukural and UNESCO ideal and mission, how we can converge the two to bring world peace. Well, our sacred mission of taking Tirukural to the world is inspired and best illustrated by the following quotes from renowned world leaders. G.U. Pope stated, Tirukural is as clear as an unpolluted spring. Yes, Tirukural, the unique book, has come to remove the impurities of the world. Albert Schweitzer, there hardly exists in the literature of the world a collection of maxims in which you find such lofty wisdom as in Tirukura. And we know the very famous uh, quotation by Subramanya Bharadya, who said that the outstanding greatness of Tamil Nadu was that it gave Valluvar to the world. And Professor Maurice Wintermatis from Austria stated, Valluvar's Kural is one of the gems of the world literature. He stands above all races, caste and sex, and what it teaches is a general human morality and wisdom. So I think with all these, you know, uh, declaration, all these statements made by those eminent personalities, we have the foundation is well laid for Tirukural to be a world book. And so therefore, as I said, the relationship between Tirukural and UNESCO have been, have been well established. And today we'll, be, we'll have the special privilege of of listening to a very eminent speaker on this topic. But before that, allow me to also mention two other major developments which has taken place since we launched the initiative. I, uh, one, the other one is the decision of the Tamil Nadu government to set up a special committee to work on the proposal of taking Tirukkura to UNESCO will be a great support to the whole initiative. And we are waiting for the elections uh, to be over and following that, we will have a clear position, and I'm sure the Tamil Nadu government, the future Minister of Tamil Development, will take this matter seriously on board so that we can progress together to, the, to take Tirupural to UNESCO. And another uh, is significant development also, I must say, is that I was following the Tamil Nadu election, where the BGP, in its manifesto for Tamil Nadu election, stated that all arrangements will be done for the Kural Malay um, to be implemented, the project to be implemented. It is estimated around 100 crores. And that will be, and in fact, in the, in the manifesto, they stated, Tiruk Kural Malay, I quote, Tiruk Kural Malay Park, Ma Malay Park, will be set up with stone inscriptions of 1,330 golden verses of Tirukkural and their meanings. Tirukkural Stone Inscription Park will be set up with all amenities at Malaya Palem Hill, formed out of a single stone and spanning across 20 acres and located in Nambiyu Taluk of Euro District. And, and also announcement will be made for adoption of Tamil as official language in Madras High Court. Well, this, uh, this is yet another milestone in the, in the journey that we are taking to take Tirukkura to the world. And I am glad that we have all these, you know, um, interesting initiatives, which will give further momentum to the mission that we have embarked on. Well, let me now come to the main uh, topic of our, of today's uh, event. We are, I must say, we are very privileged to have a very distinguished scholar, Professor P. Maruda Nayagam, formerly chairman Department of English of Pondicherry University, which he founded and headed for 15 years. And he was also a fellow of the Central Institute of Classical Tamil. He holds three MAs 
including one from the University of Hawaii in USA and one from uh, East West Center Scholar. He has two PhDs, one for his theories in English on myth criticism and the other for his work in Tamil on TP, Minaksi Sundaram. He secured the first delete of Pondicherry University for a theories praised by the examiners for its encyclopedic treatment of the literatures of many traditions. His research interests ranging from Western literary theory and criticism to Sangam poetry. He has published about 300 articles in American and Indian journals, 35 books in Tamil and 15 in English. He has translated into English the whole of the Purana Nuru and so many other uh, work that he has done. So I will not elaborate more. We, 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 are family. we know about his erudition, his remarkable contribution, and most importantly also, I'm, I'm happy and uh, privileged to say that he, hold, he was the first incumbent of the Peranyar Anna Chair of Mahatma Gandhi Institute Mauritius from 2000, in 2015. He has also contributed a very interesting article in the book, Tirukkural as a Book of the World, which was published by the Institute of Asian Studies. And he wrote the article on Tirukkural as a world book. So we have, we can have no other better person, better eminent uh, speaker today <laughs> than uh, Professor Marudanayagam. And it's my a pleasure and honor sir, to invite you to address the audience. Thank you very much. Mikkan and Ri to all of you. Thank you very much. Manakkam, uh, the title of my talk, as mentioned earlier, is Valluvar's Tirukkural as the Book of the World. A careful and impartial survey of the great books of the world would reveal that there aren't many strong contenders for the title of the book of the world. The vision of the vision of life embodied in the writings by most of the leading thinkers of all the ancient the classical societies suffers from certain inexcusable limitations which have rendered them obsolete. From this point of view, Valdivar stands head and shoulders above almost all religious leaders, theologians, philosophers, and the poets the world has seen during the last 25 or 30 centuries. Compared to the rest, his is the only work which takes all aspects of human life into consideration and remains relevant despite the massive changes that have taken place in every walk of life and the scientific discoveries about the vastness of the expanding universe. In his emphasis on the oneness of mankind, in his look, focus on life here and now, in his rejection of all superstitious beliefs about how the world came into being and how it is going to end, and about what happens before birth and after death in his indifference to the wild conjectures relating to man-god relationship and in his unwavering advocacy of an eclectic philosophy of life, Valdivar is unique and has no worthy rival for the top position. From Sangam classics, we learn that the ancient Tamils believed in the oneness of mankind, rejecting the foolish divisions based on race, religion, nation, color, caste, creed, and language. This is evidenced not only by the single statement made by Pungundana, to us all towns are one and all men our kin, but by the age-old Tamil tradition of beginning a long poem with a reference to the world. Mullai Patu opens with the phrase Nanandala Yuvulaham Nedunalvadai with Vayaham Panipa Parumana Tupadai with Agaliri Visumbil 
சிறுபானாற்றுப்படை மணிமலை பனைத்தோல் மாநில மடந்தை மதுரை காஞ்சி வித் வியன் வியன் ஞாலம் திருமுருகாற்றுப்படை வித் உலகம் ஓப்ப பல நேர்வு தெரிதரு கம்பராமாயணம் வித் உலகம் யாவையும் தாமுள ஆட்களும் பெரிய புராணம் வித் உலகலாம் உணர்ந்து ஓதற்கு அறியவன் முதுமொழி காஞ்சி எம்பாட்டிகலி ஸ்டேட் that all the moral sets catalogs are common to all the people living all over the sea surrounding world every list of 10 recommendations or morals is preceded by the line argali ulagathu makkalkallam a didactic work of later times was given the name ulaga neethi the world known to the people of tamil nadu was not a small one confining to the region in which they lived since they had had trade relations with the egyptians the greeks and the romans they were well aware of the existence of a huge world in which peoples of diverse races religions languages and cultures reside the opening passage of madurai kanji refers to the wide spaced world bounded by the seas of noisy waves the huge planets ever moving along their appropriate paths the red red sun making the day and the white red moon making the night patina palai speaks of the kind of peaceful coexistence and cooperation that the natives enjoy in the company of men and women from various nations mulivala theyathu ulambayar maakkal kalandu inidu urayum immigrants who had widely traveled and mixed with several groups of people live in harmony with the natives the city that for is a blameless place of several languages and the population there resembles the diverse groups of artists of various faculties drawn from many places gathering together in a hori town celebrating a festival this cosmopolitan outlook did not end with the sangam writers and the tiruvalluvar but continued through several centuries and was cherished in the 20th century in the poems of bharati and bharati dasan bharati prays to god and then paattu tirathale in the vayathai paalithida venum bharati dasan prays to those who are endowed with the mother's heart that treats all the living beings of the ancient world as one tollulaga makkalallam ondru ennum thaayullam thanilandro inbam ramalinga adigalar the architect of the concept of sarva samaya samarasa sutta sanmarkam as an essay ulagalam ennum solluthu itta urai analyzing what the word ulagu signifies in the phrase ulagalam on the contrary plato and aristotle and other thinkers of the classical period limited their consideration to the greek islands the sanskrit dharma shastras excluded from their consideration all those who lived outside the narrow region of aryavarta whose boundaries were the himalayas and the vindhyas the tamil tradition of the awareness of the oneness oneness of mankind though it began earlier than the world war continued to be preserved by the later generations mainly because of his strong emphasis on it in his famous declaration pirappukkum ella uyirkum as well as in his enunciation of moral principles of universal application distinguishing tirukkural from sanskrit didactic writings parimelagar insightfully observed that of the three areas of vadak tandam and ulukam crimes punishments and ethics unlike the sanskrit works tirukkural doesn't deal with vadak and tandam mainly because they differ from place to place and from time to time whereas ethics is of everlasting value to the entire mankind plato believes in class distinctions and it denies even the right to education 
to the labor class found the unfit for a virtuous life men are not born equal he says and are not to be treated as equals plato divides human beings into men of gold men of silver and men of brass and iron he says you are brothers you yet god has framed you differently some of you have the power of command and in the composition of these he has mingled the gold therefore also they have the greatest honor others he has made of silver to be auxiliaries others again who are to be husbandmen and the craftsmen he has composed of brass and iron though plato is hailed as the first and foremost of western rationalists he has approved of some of the superstitious beliefs of his people very much like the greeks of his time plato accepts the oracle of delphi as a national authority and he concludes and concedes that religious institutions will be regulated by it the founding of temples sacrifices and the cults of gods demigods and heroes the burial of the dead and services to propitiate the powers of the other world believed to be institutions of the highest order must be left to the delphian apollo he further observes these are matters we do not understand ourselves and in founding our common well we shall be wise to consult no other religious authority than our national divinity indeed in religious matters the authority of this god from his seat at the very navel of the earth may be said to extend to all mankind it is also believed by plato that when each generation has educated others like themselves to take their place as guardians of the common well they will depart to live in a special heaven called the islands of the blessed in fact plato held that the planets themselves are immortal living creatures but the worst of his beliefs is that when when a man of brass or iron becomes the ruler of the state it will be destroyed the state will be destroyed he says because the oracle has given such a warning in his republic plato contends that the justice belong to that highest class of good things which are worth having not only for their external rewards but much more for their own sake we shall keep ourselves in the upward way and in all things pursue justice with the help of wisdom he says then we shall be at peace with heaven and with ourselves both during our sojourn here and when like victors the games collecting gifts from their friends we receive the prize of justice and so not here only but in the journey of a thousand years of which i have told you we shall fare well this is what he says what valuer calls aram has to be pursued more for its own sake than for its rewards in this life and after death serappu inum selvamum inum arathinungu aakam yavano pirthu arathan varuvade inbam mattallam puratha pugalum ila but elsewhere valuer makes it clear that one should be just righteous and helpful to others even if there is no heavenly recompense nallaru eninum kulal thidu melulagam illeninum idale nanru here valuer is a true to the ancient tamil tradition in puranaanuru a poem by copper in jordan condemns those who wonder whether or not they should perform a righteous act the poem says only the wavering with a heart not bereft of dense dirt will not stop doubting if they can do good things or not the one that goes hunting tuskers may catch them the hunter of small birds may return empty handed if the great with great aims may enjoy the fruits of their good deeds they can even gain the pleasure of paradise if there is no heavenly joy they can even be freed from the cycle of birth if there is no rebirth it is great to persist with a blameless body living a fame as high as the himalayan peaks
it is underscored by the poet that skepticism about the rewards of virtue should not lead one to a rejection of righteous deeds the greek philosopher glorifies the soul at the expense of the body he says for the body is a source of endless trouble to us by reason of the mere requirement of food and is liable also to diseases which overtake and impede us in the search after true being it fills us full of loves and lusts and fears and fancies of all kinds and endless foolery and in fact as men say takes away from us the power of thinking at all it has been proved to us by experience that if we would have pure knowledge of anything we must be quit of the body this belief leads to plato's philosopher to be entirely concerned with the soul and not with the body he is waiting restlessly for the day when he can get away from the body and turn to the soul this kind of denigration of the body valluvar won't approve of so though he praises the ascetics who lead a life of renunciation these ascetics are not slaves but masters of the sense organs and have renounced earthly pleasures for the sake of good conduct unlike plato's philosophers they don't treat life with contempt but know the various truths of the five namely taste light touch sound and smell which constitute the experiences of the world suvai vali uru osai natram endra aindin bahai derivan katte ulagi in their case also there is no life negation on the other hand in addition to taking care of their soul they have to do what they can to enable their fellow human beings to save their souls mannuir ombi arulal varthi illanba tanuir anjum vinai nallathan nadi arulalga pallathan therinum abide tonai the ascetic should cultivate the highest and most divine form of love for all creations which is called arul to plato the philosopher is the roof and crown of all created beings but to valluvar it is the householder accepting life with all its miseries and living it properly to us to be privileged to over the ascetic plato is a philosopher will be absorbed in the pleasures of the soul and will not think much of human life plato himself dislike the distractions of family affection his attitude to the physical relationship was one of contempt as he considered the instinct an unruly one valduvar on the other hand celebrates the family life the blessings of health mate and the joy of having one's own children in three different chapters of 10 couplets each arathathin ilvalkai athin purathathin oi peruvadu evan vayathul vaalvaangu vaalvavan vaanurayum devathum vaikkapadum mangalam enba manaimaachi matra nangalam nanmakkat peru this is a far cry from plato's contention that among the guardians of the ideal republic both family and private property should be abolished plato expresses no humanitarian sympathy extending beyond the borders of greece this is quite evident from the statement attributed to plato he says i thank god he used to say that i was born greek and not barbarian all the non greeks are barbarians free man and not slave man and not woman but above all that i was born in the age of socrates plato preferred to be a human being of his time his nation his race his society and his sex valduvar on the other hand given his world view would have nothing to do with any single caste creed race religion society nation or language all men and women are his kin and every place on this earth is his aristotle recommends as virtue what lies between two extremes it is a golden mean according to him between vices of excess action 
and vices of deficiency of action courage represents the middle path between foolhardiness and cowardice temperance between licentiousness and insensibility liberality between prodigality and illiberality magnificence between vulgarity and meanness high mindedness between vanity and little mindedness truthfulness between boastfulness and self depreciation wittiness between buffoonery and boorishness friendliness between obsequiousness and quarrelsomeness modesty between bashfulness and shamefulness righteousness between envy and malice there is a subtle difference between the aristotelian concept of ethical values as via media and valuers delineation of virtue the tamil philosopher while lauding every virtue censors the corresponding or related vice if there is a chapter praising education there is another condemning lack of education the chapter on friendship to be cherished is followed by one on friendship to be shunned since there is no question of compromising with any virtue no question of providing for an escape route no question of what is called apad dharma he sets no limit to any virtue manathukan maasilan aadal anaitu aran aagula neera pira being spotless in mind alone deserves to be called virtue everything else is a mere pomp of sound ennandi kondarkum uivundam uivilla seinandi kondravar there may be salvation for those who have killed all other virtue but not for the one who has killed gratitude arivunul ellam thalai enba thiya seruvarkum seyyavu to do no evil even to enemies will be called the chief of all virtues the superiority of valuers stands will be appreciated if one realizes that aristotle has belittled virtue itself by quantifying it in fact the great german philosopher kant reprimands aristotle for making only a quantitative difference between virtue and vice kesiar's works and dates a didactic work in greek though held in high esteem by the west belongs to a period when it could be unfair to expect a society to arrive at a well formed well articulated philosophy of life it is in the form of an exhortation addressed by hesiod to his brother persis to revere justice and to work hard and describes how success in agriculture sailing and other forms of economic social and religious behavior can be achieved by observing certain rules including the right and wrong days for various activities it is full of this book by hesiod is a full of mythical narration which represents superstitious beliefs and irrational ideas as a truth to be taken seriously says why should one work hard one would be able to work in just one day so as to have enough for a whole year even without working but the gods keep the means of life concealed from human beings forcing them to work hard how is it that the earth is full of evil his answer is the tribes of men previously used to live upon the earth entirely apart from evil and without grievous toil and distressful disease which give death to men but the woman pandora removed the lid from the storage jar with her hands and scattered all its contents abroad she wrought baneful ends for all human beings how are wicked men punished his answer is to those who care only for evil outrageousness and the cruel deeds zeus marks out justice often even a whole city suffers because of an evil man who sins upon them zeus brings forth woe from the sky famine together with the pestilence and the people die away the women do not give birth and the households are diminished by the plans of zeus 
what should one do to be free from the anger of god his answer is according to your capability make holy service to the immortal gods in a hallowed and pure manner and burn splendid thai pieces on the altar at other times seek propitiation with libations and the burnt offering both when you go to bed and when the holy light returns so that their heart that is the heart of the gods their heart and spirit will be propitious to you how should one treat one's friends and foes his answer is be friendly to your friend and go visit those who visit you and give to him who gives and do not give to him who does not give for one gives to a giver but no one gives to a non giver give is good grab is bad a giver of debt let the payment agreed for a man who is your friend be reliable and smile upon your brother but add a witness too for both the trust and distrust have destroyed men do not let an ass fancy woman deceive your mind by guilefully cajoling you while she pops in your granary whoever trusts a woman he says trust the swindlers let there be a single born son to nourish the father's household in this way wealth is increased in the halls and may he die an old man leaving behind one son in his turn do not treat a comrade in the same way as your brother but if you do then do not harm him first nor give him a lying grace with your tongue but if he begins telling you some word contrary to your spirit or or even doing some such thing then be mindful to pay him back twice as much what would please zeus and the other gods his answer is do not ever pour a libation of gleaming wine at dawn to zeus or the other immortals with unwashed hands for they do not listen but spurn the prayers and do not urinate standing up facing the sun but be mindful to do so after it sets and before it rises but even so do not completely bear yourself for the nice belong to the blessed ones and do not cross on foot the fair pouring water of ever flowing rivers before you have prayed looking into the beautiful stream and washed your hands with lovely clear water whoever crosses a river unwashed in evil and in his hands against him the gods the feel the resentment and they give him pain afterwards and not ever put the ladle on top of the wine bowl while people are drinking for a baneful fate is established for this and do not leave your house unfinished when you make it lest a screaming crow sit upon it and croak what are the auspicious days approved by zeus and for what purposes he says for beginning with the sowing avoid the 13th day after the month begins and yet it is the best one for getting your plants bedded in the middle sixth day is very unfavorable for plants and good for a man to be born but it is not favorable for a maiden to be born but it is a kind day for castrating kids and rams and for fencing in an enclosure for the flocks and it is fine for a man to be born such men are fond of speaking mockery and lies and guileful words and hidden whispers on the eighth day of the month castrate a boar and a loud bellowing bull hard working mules on the 12th on the great 20th in the fullness of the day a wise man is born his mind will be very very sagacious one man praises one kind of day another another but few are the ones who know one time one of these days is a mother in law another time a mother happy and blessed is he who knows all these things and the death is like without giving offense to the immortals distinguishing the birds and avoiding trespasses it is to be noted 
that most of these senseless ideas were later surreptitiously taken to the laws of manu and represented as vedic injunctions the roman philosopher lucretius in his de rerum natura wholly heartedly advocates that the prudent should refrain from direct or indirect association with the common people three poetic images are used by him to describe the bliss experienced by the wise who distance themselves from the grief stricken mob a man on a firm cliff watching the seamen toil below a man at a safe distance watching two armies fighting against each other and a man perched at the top of a hill viewing the giddy crowd deep below how diametrically opposed to this is to valuers advice to the virtuous valuer says upiravinal varum kedu enil agudu varvan vitru kol takkadu vidaitu if doing public good brings a disaster one should post it by selling one's self dharma dharmapada extols the men who flee from the common crowd treating it with utter contempt the forest where the rishis live in order to be far away from the madding crowd are praised as delightful places dharmapada says when the learned man drives away vanity by earnestness he the wise climbing the terraced heights of wisdom looks down upon the fools free from sorrow he looks upon the sorrowing crowd as one that stands on a mountain looks down upon those that stand upon the plain the ideal man according to buddhist ideology is the rishi or scholar who runs away from social life just as a swan flies away from lakes and enjoys his lonely life in the forest like a peacock such an assumption of yes would be anathema to valuer to him to whom the virtuous man sandron is the superman but not the hero on the battlefield or the scholar or the philosopher or the saint in the past there is a puram poem which asserts that the world exists because there are in it people who do not consume even divine nectar alone if they happen to get it who are entirely without malice and fear who don't waver who are prepared to sacrifice their lives for the sake of fame who wouldn't accept to the whole world if it will bring blame and who untiringly work not for their own good but but for the good of others this notion is similarly stressed by valuer in a number of couplets panbudayar pattundu ulagam adu indre manbukku maayvadu man the world survives because it is sustained by people of culture otherwise it would have gone down and perished under the earth sandravar sandranmai kundrin iru nilandan thaangadu manno porai this wild world would be able to bear the burden of the weight of the virtue if the virtue of sublime men declines the belief that man is essentially selfish was widely prevalent among other ancient cultures aristotle firmly believed that self love is the real basis of every friendship brihadaranya ka upanishad states that our love for the self is at the bottom of our love of all other objects maitreyi tells yagnavalkya verily not for the love of all my dear is all dear but the, but for the love of the self is all dear we cannot think of a more despicable view of mankind rejecting this idea valuer posits the view that the innate feeling of love is the hallmark of every human being anbodi yeinda valakku enba aaru irkku enbodi yeinda thodadu they say that it is to taste the life of love that the soul has been united with the body andin valiyadu veer nilai agudilarku enbudol porta udambu love is natural for every being bodies of loveless beings are only bones 
wrapped in skin in his indian thought and its development comparing tirukkural with bhagavad gita and the ancient buddhist writing albert schweizer makes a number of illuminating observations on the superiority of tirukkural while bhagavad gita in a forced and chilly manner gives us a motive for remaining in active life that it is in accordance with the order of the universe the kural justifies it what an advance by the idea of ethical activity where can profit place a man in a position to do good like the buddha and bhagavad gita the kural desires inner freedom from the world and a mind free from hatred like them it stands for the commandment not to kill and not to damage but in addition to this ethic of inwardness there appears in the kural the living ethic of love with the sheer strokes the kural draws the ideal of simple ethical humanity there hardly he says as is well known there hardly exists in the literature of the world a collection of maxims in which we find so much lofty wisdom in opposition to the buddha the kural decides that one may not eat meat even if one is quite innocent of the slaughter of the animal hegel pin points the immorality of arjuna's argument in favor of avoiding the war arjuna's scruples are based on his reluctance to kill because he feels constrained to shed the blood of person whom he knows respects and loves the subjective attitude eliminates from these scruples any claim that they stem they stem from the rep, from the repulsion felt at the prospect of killing irrespective of the relationship which the victim has to the slayer the wrong which arjuna feels he is about to do as only a relative value because it is not wrong in itself but because of the result which the deed will bring about that is the destruction of the families the corruption of the women and the consequent mixture of caste not to mention the fact that the mains will have no one left to offer rice cakes to them the glaring inner contradiction in the gita have been pointed out by more than one sanskrit scholar krishna says at one place that there is nothing on earth equal to the purity of wisdom and that the wise man is very is the is his very atman at another that renunciation of the fruits of works is better than knowledge concentration or meditation and that at another place that abandoning all duties arjuna should find a resort to devotion alone sri arabindu a great admirer of bhagavad gita and an ardent devotee of krishna conceives that it is not possible to extract from the gita its exact metaphysical connotation as it was understood by the men of the time and that all the commentaries ancient and modern all the commentaries on the gita ancient and modern agree in disagreeing with all the others each finding in it its own system of metaphysics and the trend of religious thought in his view in sri arbindu's view the aim of the gita is precisely the opposite to that of the polemist commentators who found this scripture established as one of the three highest vedantic authorities and attempted to turn it into a weapon of offense and defense against other schools and systems the thought of the gita is not pure monism nor mayavada nor qualified monism nor sankhya nor vaishnavatism because it also includes thoughts which are directly opposed to each of these the great indian philosopher poet sri arbindu lists the care cardinal principles of the gita and accepts how most of them have become obsolete he says that they dwells on the ancient indian system and the idea of sacrifice yagna as an interchange between gods and men a system and idea 
which have long been practically obsolete in india itself and are no longer real to the great human mind to the general human mind equally the idea of action according to shastras the fourfold order of society the allusion to the relative position of the four orders or the comparative spiritual disabilities of shudras and women seem at first to say local and temporal and if they are too much pressed in the literal sense narrow so much at least of the teaching deprive it of its universality and spiritual depth and the limits it limits its validity for mankind at large one wonders if the system of sacrifice as an interchange between gods and men the fourfold order of society and the spiritual disabilities of shudras and women as a propounded by the gita are worthy of consideration today they are so ridiculous and wicked that one doesn't know how they held the field for a long time in india what is more comical about the gita is that a god is made to speak in praise of himself krishna tells arjuna that he is the only savior of mankind and that no other god is to be trusted the highest secret has been told to arjuna who is warned against sharing it with other human beings the same ancient yoga it is said in the gita the same ancient yoga has been declared to be by me for the what my devotee and my friend this is the highest secret he says thus by me the most secret shastra has been told o sinless one so have i expounded to the a knowledge more secret than the secret reflect on it fully then do as the books listen again listen again to my supreme word the most secret truth of all intimate beloved art thou of me therefore shall i speak this for thy highest good become my mind that my lover and my adorer a sacrificer to me bow thyself to me to me thou shalt come this is my pledge and promise to thee for dear art thou to me never is this to be spoken by thee to one who is without as cases or devotion not to one who does not wish to hear or who despises and belittles me petty minds think of me krishna says petty minds think of me the unmanifest as being limited by manifestation they know not my supreme nature of being imperishable and the most perfect nor am i released nor am i relieved revealed to all enveloped in my yoga maya this bewildered world knows me not the unborn the imperishable this he is the unborn he is the imperishable the knowers of the triple veda who drink the soma purified from sin worshiping me with the sacrifice pray of me the way to heaven they ascending to the heavenly words of indra by their righteousness enjoy in paradise the divine peace of the gods they who worship the gods go to the gods that is the other gods those who worship the other gods go to the other gods to the ancestors go the ancestor worshipers to the elemental spirit go those who sacrifice to elemental spirits but my worshipers come to me krishna further claims that he is the one who four divisions of mankind the fourfold order was created by me according to the division of divisions of quality and active function know me for the doer of the fourfold law of human workings who am yet the imperishable non doer the works of the brahmins kshatriyas vaishyas and shudras are divided he says o parandava according to the gunas born of their swabhava self nature better is one's swadharma though in itself faulty then an alien law well carried out one does not incur sin when one does not work does one when does does the work regulated by one's self nature the supreme lord doesn't say why 
among his own created beings he is making such a discrimination and why he shouldn't be so he should be so cruel to the largest section of mankind including shudras and women the this the so called dharma shastras in sanskrit do not show any awareness of the existence of a world beyond the small area of three or four indian states where the hindu dominated society lived under primitive condition dharma shastras openly declared that shudras and all women are to be bracketed with animals the shudras among men and the harsh among beasts therefore these two the harsh and the shudra are the conveyance of beings therefore the shudra is not fit or ordained for sacrifice the shudra is a moving burial ground it says a moving burial ground therefore one should not study the veda in the vicinity of the shudra satapata brahmana claims to know the truth about women and shudras it says a woman a slave an inferior dog and a crow embody untrue the less one speaks about manushmriti the better as it makes the most despicable statements on women shudras and what what whom it calls sandalas women who are despicable says one need says women who are destitute of strength and destitute of the knowledge of the vedic text are as impure as a falsehood itself good looks do not matter to them nor do they care about you a man they say and enjoy sex with him whether he is good looking or ugly by running after men like horses by their fickle minds and by their natural lack of affection these women are unfaithful to their husbands even when they are zealously guarded here this was manu says knowing that their very own nature is like this as it was born at the creation by the lord of creatures a man should make that most effort to guard them to guard the women the bed and the seat jewelry lust anger crookedness a malicious nature and bad conduct conduct or what manu assigned to women by his very birth a brahmin is a deity even for the gods and the only authority for people in this world for the veda is the foundation in this matter on the morals preached by manu ramanujan has the following comment one has only to read manu after a bit of kant to be struck by the farmer's extraordinary lack of universality he seems to have no clear notion of a universal human nature from which one can deduce ethical ethical decrees to be moral for manu is to particularize to ask who did what to whom and when satapata brahmana waxes eloquent over the origin function and importance of yagnas it says for the gods then made food of whoever hated them and of whomever they hated and put them into a kidney fire when that when with that they pleased him and that became his food and he burnt up the evil of gods and in like manner does the sacrificer now make food of whoever hates him and of whomever he hates and put them into him into a kidney with that one with that one pleases agni and that becomes his food and he burns up the sacrificers evil as it has been observed by fair minded scholars of international repute the norms and ideals of state craft ethics truth justice equity gratitude and love which run through world wide spiritual made by comparison plato aristotle seneca otilia manu vatsyayana and a lot more of well known western and eastern philosophers theologians and the metaphysicians and logicians small exclusive and petty in the ideals and concepts they teach of moral 
and ethical goodness. Sartre, the great French philosopher, is reported to have said that now we know everything except how to live. This is a direct and a firm condemnation of all religious leaders, philosophers, and scientists who have failed to teach mankind proper guidelines, guidelines to live life as it ought to be lived. Unfortunately, their words and deeds have created meaningless divisions leading to foolish quarrels and wars that keep annihilating thousands and thousands of innocent men and women on each occasion. Satru would have qualified these statements if only he had been, if only he had known that there is an ancient Tamil classic which is exclusively, exclusively concerned with living here and now. The relevance of Tirukkural in an era of artificial intelligence, bioengineering, global warming, and cyber warfare may be called into question by many scientists, philosophers, religionists, and politicians who pin their faith on their own set of notions derived from their disciplines. But a recent book called 21 Lessons for the 21st Century by one Harari, by raising the following questions, claims to record 21 lessons for the 21st, 21st century. He asked the questions, who are we? What should we do in life? What kinds of skills do we need? Given everything we know and don't know about science, about God, about politics, about religion, what can we say about the meaning of life today? Very surprisingly, much that is common to his lessons and the world's couplets providing us enough evidence for the everlasting relevance of the life that religious faith is not a necessary condition for moral behavior and that the idea that we need a supernatural being to make us act morally or assume that there is something unnatural so morality. Morality doesn't mean following divine commands. It means, according to him, reducing suffering. Hence, in order to act morally, you don't need to believe in any myth or story. You just need to develop a deep appreciation of suffering. If you really understand how an action causes unnecessary suffering to yourself or to others, you will naturally abstain from it. People nevertheless murder, rape and steal because they have only a superficial appreciation of the misery this causes. They are fixated on satisfying their immediate lust or grief without concern for the impact on others or even for the long-term impact on themselves. This is exactly what Valver wants to drive home in his chapters on, on Innasiyamai, Kullamai and Piranil Vilayamai. He says, Tanuirku Innami Tanariman Engolo Manuirku Innasiyam. Who can one who has felt the bitter smart of wrong inflict wrongs on other living beings? Arivinal Agubadundo. Of what use is one's wisdom if one does not end others, others' pain as one does one's own? Inna inatan, one of the way, tsunami vendum, pirankan sayal. What one has felt as bitter pain, one should abstain from making others feel. No yalam, no isaidar melavam, no isaya, no in my vendu all suffering inflicted rebounds on the inflicted. Those who seek freedom from suffering will work no suffering to others. Raising the question, why a human she, woman should care about the misery of others unless some God demands it? Harari answers. One obvious answer is that humans are social animals. Therefore, their happiness depends to a very large extent on their relations with others. 
without love, friendship and community, who could be happy? If you live a lonely, self-centered life, you are almost guaranteed to be miserable. So at the very least, to be happy, you need to care about your family, your friends and your community members. Without bringing in any religion or invoking any god, though Buddhism, Jainism and Hinduism might have been widely prevalent during the world wars time and the gods of the Hindu pantheon were believed to be in hundreds. World wars stress the view that one's happiness in life solely depends on one's relations with others. That love, friendship and community are ignored at one's own peril. And that even the ascetics are doomed if they choose to lead a lonely, self-centered life in a forest. In more than one chapter, he delineates how one should care for one's family, friends, community members. There are three chapters on family life, three chapters on love and compassion, seven chapters on the need to be concerned with and contribute to the welfare of one's community and the five chapters on friendship. Among all those who strive for fruits of living, the householder living is natural life ranks foremost. Mangalam member, Manimachi, Patra the Nangalam, Nanmakkal Peru. The excellent wife is said to be the blessing of the household. Worthy children are its prized ornaments. Irundombi Ilvadvadi Allah, Virundombi, Vedan may say her purti. Living the householder's life and keeping it secure is only to tend the guests and extend the kindly help to them. Insol inidindral kanban, Yavanvala Vansol Vadangvadi. When one sees that a sweet tongue yields a delight, why should one employ harsh, unkind words? Nandri Marapadu Nandandri. It is never good to forget your favor done. It is good to forget forthwith an evil turn done. All the wealth that one acquires through one's toil is to be used in acts of kindness to the deserving. Sutratal sutrapada urihal selvandan petratal petrapayan. The end of acquisition of wealth is to live with one's kith and kin circling about. Sayar kariya yavla, not pin, adhubol vinay kariya yavla, kapu. There is nothing so hard to secure as a friendship. There is nothing so secure as a friendship against the enemy's deeds. The secular ideal which Harari advocates consists in firm commitment to truth, compassion, equality, freedom of thought, and responsibility, each of which is clearly defined by Valluva without reference to any religion of his place. He says the most important, this is Harari, the most important secular commitment is to the truth which is based on observation and evidence rather than on mere faith. Secularists strive not to confuse the truth with the belief in Valdivar's view. Yapporul yatan maitha ayinam, apporul meiporul ghandada aribu. Wisdom is that which sees the truth in things, whatever, whatever they are and of whatever kind they may be. Yapporul yar yar vai kedpinam, apporul meiporul ghandada aribu. Wisdom is that which sees the truth in whatever is here and whomsoever it may come from. Secular people's commitment to compassion, according to Harari, is not based on obeying the edicts of this or that God, but on a deep appreciation of suffering. For example, secular people abstain from murder, not because some ancient book forbids it, but because killing inflicts immense suffering on sentient beings. There is something deeply troubling and dangerous about people who avoid killing just because God says so. Such people are motivated 
by obedience rather than compassion and what what will they do if they come to believe that their god commands them to kill heretics witches adulterers or foreigners valuers condemnation of killing is not based on any religious belief avisorindu aayiram betalin onran uyir segittu unnamai nandru it is better not to eat meat by killing a living thing than to perform a thousand sacrifices with oblation sin annuyir neepinum seyyarkke tham piridu innuyir neekum vinai do not take to the deed of killing another sweet life even if your own life be the price you have to pay kannotathu ulladhu vilagiyal agudilar unmai nilakku porai the world goes on in its natural way because there is no there is benign grace people without compassion are truly burden to the earth finally rare hours secular people cherish responsibility they don't believe in any higher power that takes care of the world punishes the wicked rewards the just and protects us from <coughs> Famine, famine plague or war be flesh and blood mortal must take full responsibility we are going to ever refer to the might of what is called the state he holds the individual responsible for his rise and fall sanitan kadalin ayin enai thondrum thunnarkke divinai kwal the person is dear to himself let him not be drawn to evil devathul aagadi aninum veerchidan veivarutta kulidarum perseverance will bring us a true reward even though faith is divine may not be helpful <laughs> recommending humility as one potential remedy for human stupidity which has no limits arari states national religious and cultural tensions are made worse by the grandiose feeling that my nation my religion and my culture are the most important in the world hence my interest should come before the interests of anyone else or of human kind as a whole no where this world were mentioned let alone glorify his nation his religion or his culture <coughs> nor does he plead for the priority that should be given to his society following in the footsteps of sangam poets his predecessors world were always to claims the need to care for the interests of human kind as a whole moreover he doesn't fail to instruct every individual to be to be humble just and self possessed nilayin தெரியாது அடங்கியான் தோற்றம் மலையினும் மானப்பெருது இஃப் ஒன் அபைட்ஸ் இன் இக்வானிமிட்டி நெவர் ஸ்டேயிங் ஃப்ரம் ஒன்ஸ் ஸ்டாண்ட் ஒன்ஸ் ஸ்டாச்சர் வில் க்ரோ பெட்டர் தென் எ லாஃப்டியர் தென் எ மவுண்டன் தோ வள்ளுவர் ஸ்பீக்ஸ் ஆஃப் த ட்ரான்சிட்டரினஸ் ஆஃப் லைஃப் இன் ஒன் சாப்டர் ஹி நெவர் ரெக்கமெண்ட்ஸ் த ரினன்சியேஷன் ஆஃப் பாடி அண்ட் இட்ஸ் ப்ளஷர்ஸ் ஆன் தி அதர் ஹேண்ட் He has included 25 chapters on conjugal pleasures. This is unique in the world's library of didactic works. There is also a chapter called Marundi, which doesn't give a catalog of diseases and the medicines, but instructs how one should take care of one's body in order to live a long and meaningful life. Atal, alavarindu unga, agudu udambu. அது உடம்பு பெற்றால் நெடிதுய்க்கும் ஆறு ஆஃப்டர் ஃபுட் இஸ் வெல் டிஜஸ்டட் ஈட் அகன் இன் டியூ மெஷர் தட் இஸ் அ வே டு சஸ்டெயின் ஃபார் லாங் லைஃப் இன் தி பாடி மார்பாடி இல்லாத குண்டி மருத்து நீ மருத்து உண்ணி ஊறுபாடு இல்லை இஃப் யூ டேக் நோ ஏலியன் ஃபுட் அண்ட் இஃப் யூ ஈட் இட் வித் மாடரேஷன் யுவர் லைஃப் will be free of all in fair but vayathul vaalvaan vaalvaan vaanurai devathu vaikkapadu 
who, who he who lives his life on earth true to its calling will be placed among the gods in heaven it is a thousand pities that harari who seems to have closely studied all major religion their scriptures rituals and practices was not aware of a book which though written about 2000 years ago steering clear of religion nationalism race tribe language caste and creed categorically rejecting the view appealed by priests philosophers and the poets all over the world that hierarchy is not just the norm but also the ideal made bold to teach numerous lessons valid not only for its own time but for all centuries to come a book that would never be the cause of genocide terrorism and the destruction of cities libraries and monuments a book that doesn't tell lies about what happens before birth and after death but is solely concerned with life here and now a book that offers invaluable advice about the conduct of individual societies and nations and therefore fully deserves the honor of being declared the book of the world one more evidence may without a shadow of doubt clinch the issue in favor of tirukkural there is a very reliable report that the russian sage thinker leo tolstoy wrote a letter to the journal free hindustan in 1908 stating that he had read tirukkural and was extremely impressed with the ideas found in the chapter called inna sayyame gandhi ji who was living in south africa at that time he said to have read this letter and to have been inspired to study tirukkural and to learn tamil in order to read the work in the original in tolstoy's the pathway of life he has gathered the pearls of wisdom from the spiritual treasuries of many races and many periods in the history of mankind ranging from the bible to the german philosopher kant it is amazing to find in tolstoy's work that is in the pathway of virtue pathway of life the following chapters there is one soul in all love surfi sexual burst sexual lust lust these are the titles he has chosen for his uh, chapters sloth covetousness anger pride inequality force vanity effort doing good and kindness on refraining humility truthfulness ills of life death and life in blessedness any western reader who is acquainted with the tirukkural will immediately identify the corresponding chapters in tirukkural in his foreword to the book tolstoy states that the best of these unsigned sayings have their source in the minds of the foremost sages of the world but most of the ideas and the chapter headings in his book reveal the profound influence of tirukkural on tolstoy thank you marudanayagam i must say you given us uh, an enlightening presentation on tirukkural as a world book i'm sure all of all the participants attending this conference must have feel must have felt the depths of your conviction the profound knowledge you have and the way you've presented tirukkural as a world book comparing it to other great philosophers sayings and and uh, teachings i think you clearly and abundantly bring to us this uh, mission that we all are embarked upon making tirukkural a world book i think it's very clear and we would like to thank you we feel very honored to have had you on this series of talks and we would pray that you continue to accompany us until we reach the the goal of being at unesco in paris with our tirukkural offering it to the world uh, i would like once again to thank you very much on behalf of all the participants 
and thank you. Uh, thank you. We would like also to uh, we are publishing. We're going to publish the all the speeches, all the addresses made in the series of conferences, and would like it would be grateful if you can send us. Uh, or Mr. Rajendran or Parka Sarathi in Chennai can collect it from you so that we can keep them and publish them. And Dr. Chandrika is arranging to collect all the, all the presentation, Dr. Chandrika? Yes. And then we will then send it to Tamil Nadu for it to be printed. So that's, that's what we intend to do. So we're building up from each conference this collection of very... Um, illuminating presentation made. So I would sincerely like to thank you again, Professor Marud and I, and we, as I said initially in my introduction, that we are very honored that you've held the position of the Anna Chair in Mauritius. And uh, we also know that your great contribution in the field of in Ura, uh, you know, uh, teachings and uh, knowledge so we stand we are i feel very blessed to have listened to you today and i'm sure this will enrich further my own understanding and my own vision of life in terms of service to humanity thank you professor naig thank you very much thank you okay i would invite mr rajendran uh, just to tell us What's coming next in terms of the next, uh, the, the May uh, series of talk? What, what is the next? Uh, I understand we are one of the eminent spe future speaker uh, for May, present with us, attending our conference. So I would invite Mr. Rajendran to say a few words about that. Uh, thank you, sir. And um, it was really an excellent speech uh, by Professor Madhuraigam. Uh, the depth and uh, spread, uh, both are really simply superb. And in the same uh, series, uh, next month we intend to uh, present before you, uh, Dr. N.V.K. Ashraf. Uh, Professor Mardunayagam is, uh, he, uh, you know, he is a basically an academician. On the contrary, on the other side, Dr. Ashraf, out and out, uh, he is a veterinary doctor. Uh, he's an international um, animal rescue and rehabilitation expert, uh, heavily involved in uh, rehabilitation of um, uh, rescue and rehabilitation work in uh, northeastern part of uh, uh, India. Uh, of course, all over the all over the world, wherever there is a call, he goes. Uh, he is twenty years. Uh, he has uh, dedicated his life uh, for uh, uh, you know Thirukkural. Uh, over twenty three languages. He has uh, displayed Thirukkural in his website. Uh, out and out, uh, he also reads uh, uh, in depth uh, the world teacher, especially uh, uh, relating to various faith. He is going to, uh, like today, we heard the argument of uh, Professor. Uh, next month, we intend to place before you Dr. Envik Ashraf. Uh, he is also uh, now listening this uh, lecture. Uh, he will be arguing how and why, what makes, uh, uh, what makes Thirukkural as a, uh, the criteria and the expectation of Kural as a universal scriptures. What is the expectation? What is the criteria? How it meets uh, those criteria? Uh, incisively, he will argue out and out uh, uh, based on Thirukkural. So we ended, we will uh, let you know the date. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for uh, giving me this opportunity to introduce Dr. Envi Kashraf. Thank you very much, Mr. Rajendran. So, Professor Ashraf, I would like to extend our best greetings to you, and we are very much keenly looking forward to your talk, which will follow that of the uh, distinguished Professor Marudan Aigam. And we are very much eagerly waiting for you. And I know, as Mr. Rajendran has shared with me, that we will again be further enlightened on our road, on the journey to take Tirukkural to the world. Thank you very much. Would you like to say two words, Professor Ashraf? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead, please. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, yes, I'm looking forward to my talk next month. 
and uh, because my talk is also going to be something similar the topic is uh, uh, something similar uh, but the way it is being dealt will be different uh, i could uh, listen to dr mardanayagam speech in bits and pieces because i just landed in chennai i could <laughs> log in only at 640 yes, uh, yeah, <laughs> at the airport uh, at 640 and um, uh, brilliantly has a, he has a wide range of coverage and something like uh, i mean more or less the same story uh, but uh, my screen play would be different so uh, uh, it was wonderful i have listened i have read many of his articles in fact i wanted to read two of his articles before i uh, listen to his talk but unfortunately i had to leave in an emergency from uh, delhi so i am on the way but uh, uh, i was able to hear uh, much of the presentation i have uh, just uh, one question which has been haunting my mind for a long time he talked about meat eat- meat eating in buddhism he said we all know people write everywhere that uh, buddha did not condemn eating meat as long as it was killed by somebody else uh, i would request he didn't cite any particular verse i would request uh, mr mardanayagam to share the information which from which buddha saying authentic saying is that recorded professor mardanayagam yeah you know vadur uh, says ullan ullal <clears throat> maruthane ella uyirum tholum ullan ullal maruthane that is he should eat and it is not necessary that uh, like is, even if somebody else said killed it he should eat that is what he says and it has been stated by several buddhist scholars that the buddha approved of meat eating several buddhist scholars have stated in their writings that he didn't you know, condemn meat eating he condemned only killing for you know for the sake of eating that that's a very subtle point a subtle distinction made regarding virtue uh, but then Uh, this is what is reported even in other couplets you know uh, valdivar condemns both the jain and the buddhist practices malithalum neethalum venda ulagam padithathu velithu vidin he says malith growing a long hair or shaving it completely you know the buddhist uh, did it shaving it completely and the jains you know believed in growing long hair no? he condemns both he said malithalum neethalum venda ulagam palithathu ulithu vidin one is a real ascetic he need not do he need not go to these extremes to display his renunciation anyway i was looking i was just looking for the verse you know uh, probably i don't know what actually buddha said if you find a carcass that is already <laughs> dead Yeah. no harm in eating right. we don't know i don't think uh, he's yeah. asking yeah. you excuse me that other skill <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. i'm like yeah, that is very strange but then this is yeah but this is reported yeah. Yeah. you know uh, in some of the buddhist writings by buddhist scholars yeah, yeah, it is there it is there yeah it is there i have repeatedly seen but i have not come across the actual quote of buddha <laughs> no but uh, that, that is not to be found anywhere because yeah. the original version of you know this uh, dhammapada was burnt all copies of uh, dhammapada in the original pali uh, language were destroyed we we, we could get only uh, you know translated versions you know. The, uh, the one who translated dhammapada says he could get only the afghan translation afghan chinese uh, afghan tibetan translation when robertson who has uh, translated dhammapada says that he got it uh, he couldn't get the original version because it is not available and uh, he could get it only from this uh, afghan tibetan translation Okay thank you sir thank you anyway thank you sir thank you so much thank you. so
<laughs> Dr. Ashraf, we're looking forward to hearing from you next time. Right? Yeah, so yeah. I'm sure you'll give us a lot of food for thought. Yes, no? I hope so. I hope so. Thank you so much. <laughs> and, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. So to all our distinguished participants, I think it's uh, time for me to thank all of you and to conclude this session. It has been a very illuminating one. And I would like to thank Professor Marudanayagam once again, Dr. Chandrika, Rajendran, and uh, Parita Sarathi for the organization. And we look forward to your continued collaboration and support to us and to join us, to come, to join the, the, the journey to take Tirukura to the world. So thank you very much. Mikan and Reese, stay safe in this challenging time of COVID-19. God bless and long live Tirukura. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.